We just had a pretty interesting phase with cyberpunk modding. As more and more progress is made decompiling the game and figuring out how exactly some things work behind the scenes, we have gradually started to see mods impact the game in a bigger and bigger way, including several mods to recently release that actually add in some highly requested fan features. Now it's still very early days with cyberpunk modding, official tools are in no way here. This again is mostly just a community effort looking at what's in the files and seeing what you can do with it. It's not like official documentation is even leading users in the right direction. But in this video, what I want to highlight to you are a variety of mods to come out that do add in some highly requested features. The real first phase of modders starting to make cyberpunk their own and add in some of those community requests, including things like a third person that is fully functional, some improvements to the AI and even driving, functional mirrors, and even some more lewd or adult mods and some cheat mods because I know quite a few of you are probably interested in that type of thing. If you guys do enjoy the content, you can get subscribed. I have a pretty big cyberpunk video coming tomorrow that's quite directly related to this one. But otherwise, first and foremost, we do finally have, and it's actually not even that long, a working third person perspective mod for Cyberpunk 2077. So of course, with the news of Cyberpunk 2077 being a first person only game, a lot of people were pretty confused as to why exactly that was. I don't know though, the game can be immensely immersive at points, there still are a lot of requests from people now having played the game that wish it did have third person functionality. And I gotta tell you, after just using this mod for a little bit, I am completely on board. Even with this mod that can be fairly janky at points, because of course, third person is not intended to be a feature, it feels pretty nice in Night City to be walking around from that third person perspective. So functionally, the way this mod works is pretty simple. By hitting the B key on PC, you can cycle the camera position to four different locations. So just a floating third person directly behind you, alternatively directly looking at the character, this kind of being the funniest or the oddest of the bunch, and then over the right or left shoulder, which is probably the most functional of the different options. Specifically, the right shoulder is pretty typical. A lot of other games have a similar camera position. And although as I'm walking around quite slowly, it actually looks like there's fully fledged and working third person perspective in this game. When you start actually playing the game, things get a bit more wonky. As you aim, run, or even get into a car, your skeleton becomes quite liquefied and your character definitely will do some odd things and there will be clipping into the character. In particular, while aiming down sights, you get some hilarious combinations, some very cursed images here. Aiming in particular in combat can be super difficult with this one. I don't know if it's due to the way the camera is placed, but even though I would thought melee would be the best option, I had zero success with melee and found myself actually having the most success with things like snipers where you could just aim for somebody's torso. But overall, this really makes me excited for the future. Excited to see where this mod goes as it continues to get updated and potentially get some more implementation. It does work pretty well with the game overall outside of combat. You can talk to other characters in third person. At point it can be kind of difficult to actually line up perfectly so the dialogue options pop up because you have to be looking at them for the dialogue options to pop up and for uncertain quests it was definitely hard to actually look at that lootable object to loot it for the quest objective but after spending a few hours playing around with this one and just trying to play cyberpunk what I found was I was consistently going back into the third person running around or even walking around or just talking to other people while in third person felt pretty cool and as you'll see much throughout the rest of this video I consistently go back to it even when it's not really the main thing I'm trying to show off. So that mod more so than anything else is likely more so a proof of concept, but something that is extremely practical and just got a very big update is the Arasaka Appearance Updater. So when I made my last mod video on Cyberpunk 2077, which I'll have linked in the little I, this mod was actually broken due to an update, which is an unfortunate reality that we'll likely face over the next couple of months with Cyberpunk. Some of the cool mods I'm talking about right now may not even work as you're watching this video if another update has has come out because it may have changed some of the underlying files and the authors have to update the mods. But I digress. What Arasaka Appearance Updater is going to be is the best way to change your character's appearance on an existing save. For whatever reason, in Cyberpunk 2077, once you create your character after the start, there is no way to change their fundamental body. If you want a different haircut, if you want different piercings or tattoos, you can't do that. And what this mod is going to do is actually give you a nice way to load a save. You can pick any of the saves, 
but it'll automatically load in your most recent save, and from there, give you a preview of some of the aspects of your character and allow you to change many of those aspects. With the most recent update just coming out a couple of days ago, it added support for things like facial tattoos, body tattoos, piercings, lip makeup, and eye makeup. So in addition to your hairstyle or some of your cyberware, it's really handy. And if you're frustrated or disappointed with how you made your character look, this is the best choice you have right now to change that. Now, of course, with how much backlash has been around this particular feature, I'm going to assume CD Projekt will address this officially at some point, perhaps with one of the first free DLCs. But for now, if you want to have a different hairdo without having to start an entirely new character, this is a good choice. Okay, so this is probably the single most handy mod I've downloaded for Cyberpunk 2077 right now, just in typical non-cheating or non-lewd gameplay, and that is Better Minimap. This also just coming out a few days ago, right at the turn of the year. And basically, what this mod is going to do is make it so when you get into a car, you will have a different minimap in the top right corner. And effectively, as you're installing this one, you'll have a couple of different options as to how you want the minimap to look. There's some more vanity options, like making the minimap overall a bit bigger. You could also make it so it's a transparent layer, so you can still see it, but you can see some of the stuff behind it also, and that it doesn't have a border. All of those are totally optional though, with the main focus of this mod being, you could actually change how zoomed in it is while you're in a vehicle. So you'll notice here, I actually have it on some of the higher zoom settings, so from walking around to getting into the vehicle, I can see way more of the map. A consistent issue I have, and I think most people have with Cyberpunk is, you're driving somewhere, following the map in the top right corner, and all of a sudden a turn just appears. So you end up passing the turn, having to turn around and go down that pathway then. This pretty much eliminates that from the game because you could see more of the map. You can see those upcoming turns. Now it's not dynamic, so just whatever zoom you have it set on is the one it's going to be locked to. You have to launch the installer again or actually change one of the files to have it be a different zoom level. But the way this works, just being whenever you get into a car, you have four different zoom options, either the low zoom, the typical zoom, or one of the high or ultra high zooms, makes it a lifesaver and a must download for me now. I'd say it's probably one of the most handy mods I've used again, and definitely one you will be seeing in the background of my videos because I am not uninstalling it anytime soon. And then we have one of the first mods that does somewhat start to address some of the AI or crowd and PC issues with Cyberpunk, and that is alternate crowd behavior and other tweaks. So this is an interesting one in that it's really the first step in addressing some of these problems. Right off the bat, one of the big things this will do is actually make it so NPCs despawn a bit quicker when out of sight of you in Cyberpunk. What this will practically do is, as you're sitting on a bench somewhere, just standing somewhere, watching NPCs pass by, with this mod installed, and specifically this setting of the mod, you also can technically make it slower that they despawn, but if you chose faster, you'll see more diversity and differences in the NPCs passing you by. So as people walk by you, you're not going to see them again. They're not going to typically turn around and run back again, but rather you'll kind of have a flow of new people, and it just makes things feel a bit better as you're looking around. Even further, it actually makes it so you can have more traffic on the road and on the sidewalks, so it changes one of these settings that makes it so you can actually load more things in the background, so you might see more cars in general, but even further, more people on the sidewalks, especially when you're driving at high speeds or driving through certain areas. It's not making the traffic any smarter per se, but you'll see more of it. You'll see more car options even parked on the side of the road. The one thing that does tend to make the AI a bit smarter is it actually plays with the line of sight finder system. So basically, this bot will make it so when you actually do something, whether it be in stealth or just combat overall, the AI seem to be a bit smarter or just better with finding you. If you're trying to sneak around them or kind of being quite blatant and taking down an enemy, they'll lock onto you a lot quicker. Now, it's not a huge improvement. It's not like it's going to be night or day, but I definitely noticed a decent bump improvement wise in enemy behavior. Definitely made combat at times a little bit harder and it was without a doubt a step in the right direction. The enemy AI is one of the biggest critiques of the game and although the full overhaul we hope to have one day has to come from CD Projekt, for me at least in particular this mod was some nice changes that definitely made things feel a bit better. And also it's fully modular, so out of the four features I mentioned in this video, you can choose which ones you want or don't want and uninstall the others. Another mod that probably should have just been a feature from day one, but for whatever reason isn't, is non-hideable HUD removal. In Cyberpunk 2077, you could turn off many aspects of the HUD, giving you a almost HUDless and very pretty looking game. In particular, as a YouTuber, there's a lot of times I just want to film something, I'm not trying to actually play the game, but just get some 
pretty b-roll that I could throw in the background of a video, but there's always something left on screen. Functionally, what this mod will do is actually take away several extra of those things. So by default, you can't remove the quest markers. This will give you the option to take those off if you install that file. And other things like a crouch icon for when you're actually crouching in the game and enemy health. The enemy health one in particular does make things a bit harder, especially if you are struggling with taking down enemies because you can't actually see how much health they have left anymore. Of course, this is going to be pretty niche. I'm sure for the vast majority of people, they will want to play the game with their HUD on. But if you do find yourself in one of those specific use cases where you wanted to have a little bit of a more difficult experience with just installing the enemy health one, because this too is pretty modular, or if you want to get rid of quest markers for a full-on immersive experience, this is going to be one of the best choices you have right now. Several quick and easy files you can download and install that will give you these choices. Another pretty big one that kind of is in the similar vein to the no third person perspective is by default in Cyberpunk, you cannot see yourself in reflective surfaces, whether it be car windows, mirrors, etc. You just will never see your character. See other characters and the world, but not your own. Well, the mod enable character reflection to reflective surfaces will fix that. It's actually a fairly old mod, but seems to still work, at least for me, on the latest build of the game. And although it does work almost flawlessly, it actually has one critical error in that you will be headless for a reason when you actually see yourself on these reflective surfaces, despite the fact that your character has a head and even looking at myself in third person, I can see my head, my head will not be reflected on the surface. The mod author mentioned he doesn't know a way to fix this, but I don't honestly think it's that big of a deal. This mod's actually the least popular or at least least downloaded mod in this video, and I think it's not getting enough attention. A lot of people see that headless picture on the mod page and think, oh, that looks dumb. But the reality is the vast majority of the time, you are getting a rough look at your reflection. Typically in car or building windows or even in your own apartment, a good chunk of the time, I was just in passing and I didn't even notice my head was missing. I just saw the vast majority of my body, whatever outfit I was wearing. And for that reason, I think a lot more people should give this one a try as it does work pretty well for those types of things. You very rarely see yourself in cyberpunk. And if you want to see yourself even just a little bit more from time to time, I think this one adds in a pretty nice detail, especially for those of you that do spend a lot of time focusing on your character's appearance or finding the best outfit for them. Why wouldn't you want to just check out your character from time to time in a mirror or a car window. Another pretty cool one is going to be Walker. It's fairly simple. Basically, what it'll do is re-enable a hotkey that allows you to hold to walk in Cyberpunk. So by default, you'll run, but when you hold down a certain key that you can assign, you will take a much slower walk, the same speed that other NPCs walk during certain quests. It's really simple. There's a variety of mods that will accomplish similar things, but this is one that's just a quick and easy download adding this dedicated key. And the one that's a huge quality of life change is instant disassembling and crafting. What this will do is take away that 0.8 second timer that you have to hold down the key to craft something. Instead with this mod, when you click to craft or disassemble, it'll just be instant. The huge benefit of this being you can actually spam click now, just spam click your mouse button or if you're using controller, the A key and craft a ton of things way more quickly. By default in Cyberpunk, that's not possible because you have to hold down the craft key for just under a second. This is another one that if you get into crafting is a must download for your game and relatively simple to install, just one line in a I and I file. A mod that's super handy but can be pretty dangerous and I do want to give a disclaimer before everyone starts downloading it is save any time. What it'll do is patch the game, making it so it doesn't enter you into that combat state or a state where you can no longer save the game. So what it means is during some of those quest moments or specifically for me at least during those combat scenes when you typically can't save or quick save, you now can save or quick save. So I love this. But of course, at certain points in the game, there's a reason you can't save. So if you overuse this mod, it definitely could lead to corrupted saves from time to time. I found myself using it during combat most often and having relatively few issues. And most often what I would do with this one is if you do download it, just rely on it for quick saves. Sometimes in combat, I'm struggling. Things are getting dicey. I don't know if I'm going to survive and I just want to quick save right there so I can go back to it later on. This mod enables that. It's one of those features I wish was always here and actually gives me a bit more enjoyment in combat because I hate losing progress and having to start over from way before, especially in those moments where you realize, uh oh, I haven't saved in a while and this is looking a little bit dicey. A mod that I want to highlight because I think it's kind of funny that this part of the cyberpunk modding scenes already starting to get quite a bit of attention is the undress mod. It's a super simple one. Basically, what this mod will do is just by hitting the U key on your keyboard, you can cycle through different stages of dress on your character, either to dressed, to undressed and in your underwear, or in the female character, which part of your underwear you want to have on or fully nude. So just by hitting that key, whether it be for photos or 
I guess for your own enjoyment, wanting to see your character, in particular if you're using the third person mod, or this also works with the reflection mod, you could cycle through how much underwear or which pieces of underwear your character is wearing. But then we get into some of the cheat mods, and some of these are actually super handy, and all of this really comes thanks to the Cyber Engine Tweaks mod. I talked about this more directly in my last video, but functionally, what this will do is actually add in a console as well as several other fixes or improvements to the game, but this has also began to position itself almost as a framework. Several of the other mods in this video I talked about do require the Cyber Engine Tweaks mod to even work, and their Discord server, where they're going over this and creating several other modding tools for Cyberpunk, has become an invaluable resource for creating mods for Cyberpunk, going through the files of the game, understanding how things work or don't work, or how some of the mods I highlighted in this video are possible. They literally credit that Discord and the findings on there as the reason they made their mod or were able to make their mod. And one of the really nice things about the Cyber Engine Tweaks mod is there are several things you can add on to it just as a quick script you could run in the game to give you something, typically a cheat code. So one of the really handy ones is all recipes in the crafting game menu, what this will do is actually just unlock every recipe in the game for you. You have to run this script and make sure you do it without parentheses, for whatever reason with parentheses it wasn't working for me, and on that character you'll just have every recipe unlocked. So not even that cheaty, especially towards the end of the game, maybe you're just looking for one thing or another or trying to spec into crafting, this can be super handy to have in the background. Another really handy one is convert equipped weapons and clothing to legendary. It's another script that you just run by typing in something into the console, and what it'll do is take what whatever things you currently have equipped from armors to weapons and make them a legendary variant of them. Now for some items, this won't have as big of an impact, just boosting their stats a little, but if there are appropriate legendary variants of that item, you'll typically have more mod slots or even some special effects or abilities on that weapon also. It's super handy because getting to a legendary item or getting a legendary item in general can be difficult otherwise. If you're going attached to something, don't want to spec into the crafting tree, it can be impossible to get certain iconics as legendary without something like this. And if you don't want to be overpowered and upgrade everything, you could only equip the one weapon you actually wanted to upgrade and de-equip everything else. Another really handy resource is the categorized all-in-one command list. Basically, this is just one big Excel document that has console commands to use with Cyber Engine tweaks for all kinds of things, whether it be editing your levels or skills in game, how many attribute points you got, how many skills you got or perk points, or even one of the new and recent additions, console commands for tele teleporting to certain locations. So if you don't want to go through parkouring and jumping to some places, you can just teleport there quickly. In particular, the console command to teleport to your apartment can be pretty handy as opposed to running to a fast travel station. And lastly, one that's going to be a complete and utter lifesaver for some of you, we do have Cyber Fashion, which is one of the best and biggest community resources I've seen created thus far. Basically, what this is, is a documentation of just about every outfit in the game, literally a gigabyte of of images looking at all of them, and this being nicely organized in folders. The key with this is, every single image is titled with the item name. So just by using this console command and then inputting the name that you find on that image, you could spawn in any of this for your character. If you just want to have a cool outfit, this is the best option you have right now to browse basically all of the available options, then using Cyber Engine Tweaks, spawn in that item for your character. I imagine this took a while to create, and it's a huge community resource, so I definitely wanted to highlight it. Overall though, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one. I do hope you guys found this video informative. A lot of these mods are actually very, very useful. I have several I downloaded in this video that I'm keeping on my playthrough. In particular, that third person mod is really cool, showing just how far modding has come even just a few weeks now. With that said though, I thank you all again for watching, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.